Hello, everybody, and welcome to this Bigger Plate uh, webinar, where we're going to be talking about mind mapping for business, or I'm going to be talking about mind mapping for business. Um, hello and welcome wherever you are in the world. My name is Liam Hughes. I'm the founder of Bigger Plate, and I'm going to be trying to give you a, a really sort of high-level overview of, of how mind mapping uh, tools and techniques can work in a business setting. Uh, just before I get started, uh, I can see we've got a few people on the call already, which is great. Thank you very much. Uh, it'd be great for me to just know that you can uh, hear me okay, and and that you can see the screen okay. Uh, so if you could just use the, the little Q&A panel here in Zoom to just uh, fire me a quick message and say, yes, we can see you okay, that'd be great just to, to let me know that uh, everything's showing and, and coming through sound-wise uh, as it should. I'm on a slightly different uh, laptop and headset and all that sort of stuff today, so just need to make sure everything's as it should be. Uh, so I'm gonna continue as if it is, but please, if you can't hear me, you can't see the screen, uh, please just let me know and I'll, um, click some buttons and see if I can change things. Okay, so let me dive straight in. Uh, we're looking at a mind map here. So for those of you who are on the call or maybe not at all familiar with mind mapping, what we're gonna do today is just work around the mind map uh, kind of clockwise. So if you imagine you're looking at a clock face, we're gonna start here in welcome, then we're gonna to go to mind mapping, think, plan, act, and finish with conclusion. So that's a, a pretty good way of sort of reading and building mind maps in general. So that's how we're gonna work through um, this session today. So um, let's dive straight in and, and get cracking on this. So first and foremost, my name is, is Liam Hughes. I am uh, the founder of biggerplate.com. As I say, I started Bigger Plate when I was uh, at university, which was uh, nearly 12 years ago, I think, uh, maybe more actually. Uh, so the website went live in 2008 uh, and we've been doing it ever since. Um, you can contact me after this session or, or anytime you like, really my email address is there on the screen. We always love to hear from our members and for people who have uh, interest or questions about mind mapping. Um, we're here to kind of try and help you get the most out of these tools and techniques. So if at any point during uh, or after this session you would like to uh, contact me direct, feedback about the webinar or the website in general, please feel free to do that. For those of you who are, who are not too familiar with biggerplate.com, who we are, what we do, uh, we're sort of known for, for three things, templates, tutorials, and training. Uh, so I'm just gonna give you a very brief sort of overview of what that means, uh, just so you understand a little bit of our context. So in terms of templates, we have a mind map library at biggerplate.com. That's really what we're sort of primarily known for. The library contains thousands of mind map templates and examples that have been created and shared by members of our community. We've got a, a global member community of about 100,000, uh, 180,000 uh, members worldwide who create and share mind maps so that other people can see and, and use them. And you can download mind maps and, and really work with them as a template. So it's a great time saver, a great source of inspiration. And of course, if you create mind maps, you can also share your own for other people to see and use. We also have a very wide range of, of kind of tutorials and video content to help people learn about mind mapping. So we have tutorials, we run uh, regular expert webinars as well as these kind of free intro webinars. Um, and what that means, we've got a really wide range of videos showing how other people around the world are using mind mapping tools and techniques. So really good practitioner-led learning to, to figure out how to sort of make the most out of mind mapping. We also provide oops, sorry, that's a bit big, uh, training and consultancy services uh, around mind mapping. We've been doing this for many years. Primarily that, that sort of is based on this uh, sequence, this consulting process we go through. Uh, one of the issues with mind mapping, particularly in a business context that can happen is maybe a company or an organization buys or wants to buy software. Uh, but really the people on the ground don't quite know how they're supposed to use it. What is mind mapping software supposed to help me with? So what we do as a process is we work with companies to firstly do a bit of targeting. So we identify uh, in the current business activities where mind mapping is likely to fit in best. And we sort of are looking for really kind of information management and collaboration hotspots. So areas in your existing business activities where maybe you need to or want to see more collaborative working or perhaps where information management, information overload is a bit of a challenge. So we identify certain areas in the organization where mind mapping is likely to help. We then work with you to develop templates, that's phase two, and that's really just creating templates using mind mapping tools, whichever software you're using in your company, developing templates that align with your existing processes and activities. It's not trying to redesign them, it's just saying, let's try this existing process, but in a mind mapping, more visual format. 
And then we get into uh, something we, we do a lot of, which is training and how to use these, these tools and these templates. So we think and see that giving uh, organizations a much better chance of actually really starting to leverage mind mapping uh, practically, uh, rather than just having a high level view from a software company, maybe saying, hey, mind mapping can solve all your problems. What we really focus on is saying, hey, which areas of your current business activities do we think mind mapping can really be of, of value to you? So that's kind of the, the services part of, of Bigger Plate. Uh, so what about just kind of this webinar then, what, what are we talking about here? Well, this is really just a very quick introduction. It's a, a taster session really, uh, primarily aimed at people who maybe don't know too much about mind mapping. Um, and hopefully I can just give you a couple of sort of things, a bit of food for thought about what you could do with these tools and techniques. So it's a very simple overview and I'm going to focus on, on three areas. Uh, again, this is something we, we use quite a lot in our training and our work. We, we tend to be talking about mind mapping tools, helping people with thinking, planning and then acting with clarity or action. So thinking, planning, action, think, plan, act is how we're gonna sort of just break down this session. So I hope that's a, a good sort of overview of what we're gonna cover. Um, it'd be great for me to just understand from anybody on the call today, um, is there anything in particular you would like to learn about? Are there any questions you have uh, up front that you'd like maybe to hopefully for me to, to touch on? And if I can, uh, I will do that. So if you've got any questions, uh, off the bat that you'd like to, to know just again use that zoom question panel and I'll, I'll do my best to, to either answer the questions as I'm presenting or come round to it at the end and just see if there's anything I can help with so first of all let's just have a quick look at mind mapping so mind mapping is, is actually very very simple it's not complicated you don't need training to learn what it is or how to do it it's a very simply a way to visually organize ideas and information now, the key benefits of that are, are numerous, but we think the sort of ones that we pay most attention to are, are really the following. So what most people find um, very powerful about mind mapping is getting everything into one coherent, single visual view. What this means is in one document, a mind map, you can get both the macro and the micro view of a situation. Now that's particularly valuable in business contexts where sometimes people will get really lost in the detail and lose sight of that big picture. Or the other way around, some people are very happy talking in big picture terms, but not very good at drilling down into the detail. The great thing with mind mapping software, whether you're using it as an individual or as a team or group, is you can get both of those levels into one document. And it's very easy, just like we are now, we can be zoomed in visibly on, on sort of detail areas, or just like this, we can zoom out and just get a sense of where that detail fits into a wider, bigger picture. So even though I'm focusing in just in here, you can get a sense from me zooming out in where this bit of information fits in to the wider narrative of this particular presentation. Now that same principle applies to things like project planning, strategic thinking, uh, really anywhere, anywhere in a business where you might wanna have a little bit of a higher level view and a micro level detail tactical planning view. This is where mind mapping software is really, I think, head and shoulders above other tools and techniques uh, for, for sort of doing that in one document. So you're not having to leave one document for the details and another for the macro view. You've got everything in one place. The other part of that is having all of that information in one document is great, but if it's difficult to navigate and move your way around, that's really not much help. Well, the great thing is with mind mapping software is it's very easy to navigate. Both the information uh, and functionality in terms of moving around the map. So mind maps are very logical, very hierarchical. So everything is kind of very structured in terms of the, the, the nature of the diagram itself. So every bit of information is in relation to something else. And that makes it easier to navigate and sort of find your way and explore your way through information, as well as capture and categorize it. You've also got very simple functionality in terms of navigating around mind maps, whether that's just grabbing the screen and moving around like I was there, zooming in, zooming out, or many other ways of just navigating your way around no matter how big the mind map gets. And that's very, very powerful when information starts to build up and you've got a lot of information and ideas in a mind map. Another key benefit of mind mapping software is, is a really flexible structure. So a good mind mapping, uh, a good mind map rather, will really be a map of a situation but it's not fixed. So the ability to, to add new information, move things around and really adapt to change is very, very powerful in a business context because really things don't stay still very long. So what you need is the ability to, to sort of keep your map moving, changing, adapting, reordering, restructuring, depending on how things evolve. So again, for things like project planning, you want a, a pretty coherent structure of how you think the plan, the project is gonna go. 
but you've also got to be able to respond to those unknowns that you can't plan for. And when they happen, my mapping software is really great for just sort of very simply moving things around, saying, I think actually this now belongs here, I need this to come in here. So the ability to sort of flex and adapt to that moving landscape is really powerful. To just give you a slightly broader context, we run uh, surveys at Bigger Plate over the years of our, our member community. Uh, the last survey we did in 2018, we had over a thousand uh, full responses and it was a pretty long survey, so that's pretty impressive. Um, and we asked people a lot of different questions, but just to give you a sense of, of mind mapping uses and benefits, when we asked people to tell us what they were using mind mapping for, we gave them an open uh, text field and they put in whatever words they wanted. And these were the words they were using most. So the bigger the word, the more it was getting used. So this just gives you a visual sort of sense of what people are using mind mapping tools for. Again, the bigger words are the things that people were saying most often. So projects, planning, brainstorming, organizing ideas, presentations. You can see this kind of idea of organizing myself is really at the heart of this, whether that's organizing a project plan or organizing my ideas for presentation, whatever it might be. So these are the kind of key uses that people are, were telling us they were using mind mapping for. And then we asked them also the same sort of thing around benefits. So again, the words that are biggest on this diagram are the words that were being used the most. So organize, clear, clarity, thinking, thoughts. So again, the idea of organizing and getting clear in my mind around particular ideas or information is very, very powerful. Now, here's the key thing. This is where mind mapping tools fit into businesses. We've got great tools at our disposal, whether it's Microsoft Word for writing documents or, or PowerPoint or slides for, for presenting, but none of these tools are actually designed to help you organize your ideas and your information. PowerPoint gets a really bad press, but it's a great presentation tool. It gets a bad press because quite often we sit through very bad presentations. But actually, if you used, for example, a mind mapping tool to organize your ideas and your information, and then once you get clear on the structure of your presentation, if you then switch over to PowerPoint and design your slides based on the mind mapping approach, your slides are going to be much more coherent because you've done the organizing of your ideas and your information. And you're going to start to feel the benefits that you see in this kind of little uh, visual here around clear clarity in your thinking and your ideas. So what goes into your PowerPoint presentation or your Word document or your project Gantt chart is going to be clearer because you've used mind mapping as that upfront thinking tool. And that's a really important part of mind mapping in business is being very clear that mind mapping is not necessarily the right tool for every part of a process. It's a very good early stage thinking and mapping out sort of ideas and information and project scoping, but it's not necessarily the tool that takes you the whole way through the journey. So you've got to really be clear on where mind mapping is going to fit into your business. One thing I should probably have just put in up here for anybody who's not familiar with a uh, bigger plate uh, up here is um, we are what we call software neutral. So in case anybody thinks I've, I'm trying to sell you on mind mapping software, uh, we don't make it um, and we don't sell it. So we are software neutral. So there are some fantastic mind mapping tools out there. You can learn a lot about the best options on our website. We've got information about sort of the leading products that we would sort of uh, suggest you go and try, but we don't make or sell any mind mapping software. So what we try and help people do is understand how these tools in general can help you. And what I'm going to show you today in this session is also sort of just universally true, regardless of which mind mapping tool you're using. So I probably should have just made that clear up front. So I've just now added this to my map for future presentations. So we've covered mind mapping key benefits. So let's just look at some of the sort of practical business use cases. Uh, again, just very high level view, but once more, if you have any questions or feedback on what I'm uh, talking about, please uh, do let me know. If you maybe you're trying some of these things, uh, I'd also be really pleased to hear how you're getting on, any of the challenges you're facing and, and see if I might be able to give you any pointers there as well. So let's look at, at mind mapping maybe for, from a thinking perspective. So again, just in a business context, what our objectives are maybe going to be around thinking is we want to both individually and maybe in teams organize our thoughts. We want to explore ideas and, and issues or things, whether they're things, opportunities or threats, whatever it might be. And really what we want to try and get out of this is context for decision making and actions. We want to organize our, our thinking so that we can do better planning and better action, which is what comes later. So this is kind of our objective when it comes to the thinking part, I guess, in business. So a good example of, of how you might apply this and when we do this as a process with um, some of those consulting clients is something like strategic thinking. And you can use very, very simple approaches and very simple mind maps 
and get quite a long way in very good quality strategic thinking. So I'm just going to sort of show you how that might work. So why sort of might you use SWOT, for example, uh, which stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. It's a very well-established framework, uh, but it's also very simple. It's very accessible. Uh, so we do this with clients because whether someone is a very experienced uh, C-level executive, or maybe they're straight out of school, straight out of college into their first job, everybody can have a perspective on the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. We don't need to bury it in complex language, but this is a great way of getting people to just think at a slightly higher level, a slightly more strategic level view of, of the organization or their team or their division, whatever it might be. So it's a very easy framework for thinking. So how are we gonna do it? Well, this is a, a sort of process diagram that we use to just say how you could do mind mapping in general. This isn't unique to SWOT, but this is how we, Bigger Plate, suggest people kind of think about mind mapping. And you don't have to follow this religiously at all, but if you're maybe struggling to get started or you maybe get a little bit of writer's block, uh, this is a really good sort of prompt for your, for your thinking and to start mind mapping. So the four stages we suggest you go through are to capture information and ideas first, just, just focus on getting it all out. So this is almost your sort of traditional brainstorming idea, just get as many ideas out as you can, get things out of your head, pull things from documents and just get it all out. Don't worry about how it fits together yet. So first we're gonna capture ideas and information. Then we're gonna move around to this second stage, which is where mind mapping really starts to play a key part. And that's when we start to categorize that information. So if we've captured 100 pieces of information, what we really wanna start doing is batching them together and see which pieces or ideas belong together. Once we've done that, and I'll show you in a second how we do that, we then really wanna go that step further and begin prioritizing which information matters most, which ideas are the best, which challenges are the most important. That's really important to do before we begin any sort of planning or actions. Because if we go straight into planning and actions, there's a huge risk we do planning and actions and get very busy, but in the wrong places. If we've done a really coherent process of capturing, categorizing, and prioritizing our information, we stand a much better chance of doing our work in the right areas. So planning for the right projects, planning for the right actions at the right time. So that's the four steps we're looking to just kind of replicate or, or sort of think, keep in our mind as we do mind mapping. So how might that work out in a sort of practical swap mapping sort of way? Now what I'm gonna show you is just a sort of pre-made example, but this is exactly what you could do either as an individual or as a team in a business context to just raise your thinking a little bit above the day-to-day -day and think a slightly more strategic level thinking. So first of all, let's think how that capture process would work. Well, that's probably just gonna start off with a really simple mind map like this. It's just got four key headings, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And all I would suggest you do at this stage is just start to build up a very big list under each of these categories. So strengths in your company today might be maybe brand uh, strength. Maybe you've got a really great team. Uh, perhaps uh, product development maybe is a strength. So just in your, in your own mind or as a team, just brainstorm anything that comes to mind. So maybe as you, as you start to populate just a big list, you then start to think of some threats. Maybe, maybe there are new competitors, uh, maybe uh, I don't know, global politics is a threat, whatever it might be. So all we're doing at the moment is just getting our ideas out of our heads and, and sort of onto the, the mind mapping page. And, and this can just kind of build up very quickly and easily. And all I'm using here to capture the information is just the insert and return key. So this isn't complicated to do. So that maybe helps us to build up our, our sort of list of, of, of topics that we want to include. And we know this is information of relevance to our swap. So we've done our capture and we end up with a map just full of lots of information, but that's not necessarily that helpful in itself. What we want to get to next is that categorized stage. So here's that same sort of map, maybe just built out a little bit further. Uh, and I'm just going to switch off this presentation mode to make my life a bit easier. So let's say you've gone through that sort of brainstorming uh, process and you've come up with a, a whole range of strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats here. But all we've really got is some big long lists and we're trying to get away from, from that. So here's where you then would start to kind of categorize. So what you want to do is be looking in this long list and, and looking for things that belong together. So, for example, there's quite a few things in here that to me would suggest we need a people category. So I'm going to start pulling things into people. Uh, maybe you've got creative, skills, uh, passionate, uh, smart, whatever it might be. 
uh, and experience. Now, again, I've put lots of things into the people topic here, and you see I've also got some duplication. So again, we want to work that out of our mind map. So again, we can just click one, delete, and start to refine that. So here's where, again, I would start to say, well, maybe can we break this down again? Can we categorize this further? So yes, we create a people category, but can we then sort of maybe break that down again a little bit further? So we might break it down and say, well, there's a good one about skills, but maybe there's something else about sort of attitude or culture, whatever it might be. So that's where you maybe say passionate, maybe uh, creative, uh, want to improve things. And then maybe skill is where you start to get a little bit more specific and really sort of ask yourself, well, what skills? So that, again, you know, maybe we say technical skills. Uh, maybe we say, um, I don't know, creative skills. Or maybe that's what was down here. So let's put that back up into there. So again, even there, you can just see, start to work the information around and hopefully get lots of kind of um, clarity by just moving things around the place. Now, I'm just kind of making this up as I go, but very quickly, we've just taken sort of 10 or so pieces of information and broken it down by categorizing and recategorizing and subcategorizing. And if we do that across this entire uh, sort of collection of ideas, what we can end up with is hopefully something that then becomes a little bit easier to start prioritizing. So our initial SWOT mind map, again, we started with just a blank mind, blank mind map. We then might start to say, well, we've got maybe all these categories. So I've done my categorization. So here's our version three mind map. So maybe we've categorized around people and sector, just like we were sort of starting to do before. But what we then want to start doing is surfacing the things that matter most. So with um, organizations, when we run strategic mapping sessions with them, we'll capture a big map and we'll do our categorization. And then I will be challenging them and say, okay, well, tell me the, the three things, if you were looking at this whole picture under here, which three things matter the most? And what we'll then create is a little area up here called the top three. And all we want to do here is summarize the things that have emerged through our discussions and our categorization. So we might then be trying to summarize the information that's really all in detail down here. So under weaknesses, we've emerged that the three things really emerging as the most important weaknesses right now are these three things. Now all the detail is down here where we've captured and categorized, but I just want to surface some of the most important stuff to that higher level of the mind map. And that's where, again, I can start to use some of the software functionalities like some of these priority icons. And, and again, I would be encouraging people to just kind of move things around and say, okay, which one is number one, which one is number two? And that ability to just very visibly sort of surface those priorities is really very powerful. Another issue um, option you've got here is to almost hide all of the other information that you don't need. So maybe once you've got to this stage of prioritization, you're clear on these things with this marker are the most important to pay attention to. So we've captured all this other stuff, but we don't want it to cloud our thinking anymore. We want to move to the next stage, which is around planning. So how we might help ourselves there is actually by using things like filtering in the software. So for example, I can say, show me any uh, topics that have the little green arrow on it. So I've inserted these top three areas and I've used this little arrow icon. So then when I tell the software to hide everything else, or just show me this, what it means is I now get a really nice tidy filter view. And this is really then what we're gonna start planning around. We've identified our top three. Now the other information is not gone forever, it's just sort of filtered out of view at the minute. But you think about how vast that information could become and the ability to flick a switch now and say, right, let's focus on these key priority areas just by using a little green icon and the filtering function of software. Really powerful way to help groups zone in on the next stage of the thinking, the planning, or the doing. So once we've, we've done our prioritization, we then probably want to get into the actual planning and, and, and actions of, of our, our, our process. So we've done capture, categorize, prioritize, and plan. So if we took that prioritized view, that top three view, and then started to build out planning, it maybe starts to look something like this. So again, we've got all of this information back, but if I wanted to, I could apply that filter again and say, just, just show me the top right stuff, uh, the top three stuff. I'm gonna do that. And here's where again, once we get into our summary, we can then all still within the same mind map, which again, remember just started from a pretty simple listing of strengths, weakness, opportunities, and threats. We're now able to go right into action planning. So if our leadership position, for example, is one of our top three strengths, how do we, over the next three, six months, improve on that or reinforce that position? Let's start thinking about maybe some objectives. So maybe our objective can be built into the mind map. Our objective might be greater visibility for our work. Well, how do we measure our progress on that? Well, 
we're going to identify some key results. So in here, we've identified three results. And then again, still using the same mind map, we're also giving ourselves a little ability to monitor and update our progress on those results. So have we achieved two press articles per year? No, but we've got one, so this is 50% done. So still within the same mind map, we're able to start monitoring our progress. And again, simple things we can do within the same diagram is start to identify very tangible actions. Now with our clients, we use a very simple way of prompting thinking around actions, which is what are you gonna start, stop, do more or do less in order to try and achieve these key results. So things to try and improve our press articles, for example, we might start researching the relevant press organizations. And again, we can assign little sort of markers in the software and say, this is a Liam action. Uh, and then I can, again, I can even filter in the mind map and say, show me all of the tasks that have been assigned to Liam or all of the tasks assigned to Barney. So again, in this one map, we've gone all the way from an initial brainstorm right through to action planning with very specific actions assigned to particular people. Depending on which software you're using, you can even do things like assigning sort of dates for, for when that's going to be completed by. So a huge amount of power in one visual summary of your uh, particular business situation. So that's what we've gone right the way through from initial brainstorming all the way through to action planning, all the while using one single mind mapping document in mind mapping software. Again, hugely powerful, the ability to go from very early stage right through to very tactical planning and actions in one place. Really very powerful. And of course, not forgetting all of that other information, the context which is informing these actions is still all captured down here. So if we needed to go back and remind ourselves about some of the things we said, we've got it all here in this kind of summary and background information, even though it's hidden once we're ready to go into action planning. So that's just a, a kind of quick look at sort of how you might use mind mapping to do sort of thinking processes. And again, that's not unique to SWOT. You could do other uh, sort of thinking processes. So again, if you go to biggerplate.com, you can jump across. So this is the Bigger Plate website for those of you who are not familiar. And I've got a, a mind map here about pestle analysis, which is just another sort of framework for thinking, really. And I could just say to download this mind map. That's uh, going to prompt me to log in. Again, this is free to do, so you can get mind maps from Bigger Plate for free. You just need to make sure you've got some software on your computer that's going to be able to work with those uh, those files. And when we log in, my computer having a little bit of a slow day, obviously. Hopefully, oh, come on. What's going to happen when I'm able to log in is I'm then able to say, "Download this diagram." Okay, here we go. So I can say, "Download this mind map." That's then going to pull it from the Bigger Plate site onto my computer. It's just going to pop it down here. I can open that up. And I've got a mind map file here, and it's not, again, just a picture of a mind map, it's a working file. So just like we did with our SWOT, we could just start to build out our ideas and our information. We could then do that capture and categorize process under each of these headings, and again, move right the way through to prioritization and planning, all within one mind map. So a very, very powerful way of moving through an entire process, all in one place. Other examples, you might use some sort of slightly more structured or slightly more focused strategic planning maps. Again, plenty of examples and templates for this on Bigger Plate. So again, here's an example I found earlier on the website. I can say to download that. Same process, it's gonna download onto my computer. I click to open it and you see here we've just got a, a different approach to strategic planning. This map actually has a SWOT analysis built into it as a small component. Uh, but again, we've got lots of little topics here that we can then just start to build out our ideas, our, our mission, our values. So you've got a real template to help you get off the starting blocks and help you build out your ideas. And if you keep in mind that capture, categorize, prioritize, and plan, and use one of these kind of templates, you'll make a huge amount of progress, really in not much time, because mind mapping just is going to help you pull things together a little bit more easily. Uh, anybody who's ever been in brainstorming sessions with lots of post-its and flip charts, uh, this will make your life a lot easier if you start to do uh, integrate mind mapping approaches into that as a process. So that's a, a very quick look. Again, I'm, I'm just trying to give you a sort of high level view of how you can use these approaches uh, to really help with sort of thinking. And that, again, could be individual or it could be organizational or it's a team. SWOT analysis is just one framework for thinking. There are many others. So. We've done a bit of thinking and we've applied this kind of capture, categorize, prioritize, and plan. So what if we were going straight into planning of sorts? Now the same sort of principles apply, but what's our objective here? Well, what we might really want to be doing is kind of capturing requirements around potentially a project. 
we maybe want to do a little bit more collaborative planning. We want to involve maybe multiple stakeholders or different teams in the planning process. So this is where I'd really be advocating getting mind maps up on a big screen and, and working on that together and uh, looking at the same picture and really having people contribute to building up the plan in a mind map, looking at the same thing at the same time. It really helps improve uh, how people understand the project. It helps people also understand how other people are viewing the project and understand each other's different viewpoints and perspectives on the same issue. So this can be really great for improving shared understanding and alignment around a particular project. And then of course, using those same sort of little symbols that we were using earlier, we've got nice little ways to sort of just manage and monitor our progress on the project as well, all within one document. Now where a lot of uh, people on, on Bigger Plate are using mind mapping is actually managing projects. And this is people who maybe are not formal formally trained project managers and they don't need really big heavyweight project management tools and mind mapping is a great tool for the rest of us the, the people who are not sort of formal project managers so using mind mapping tools is a great way of managing projects uh, provided they're not totally over the top huge projects obviously um, but a really great tool for, for the non-professional project managers uh, to really manage projects in their entirety really big sort of heavyweight project managers they quite often are using mind mapping in the early stages to map out requirements and scope sort of objectives. And then they may be moving into more heavyweight tools. So again, it just depends on your, your projects, that depends on your role, the degree to which mind mapping software is going to be able to help you with some or all of a project management process. So let's just take an example of a, of a project planning map. And again, this is just an example. Let's say our project is maybe hosting a conference or an event. So again, just another template you can download from Bigger Plate one of, of many around event planning. So we've searched the website, we found a, a template that we think is useful. I've got some software on my computer, so I say I'm gonna download this mind map template for event planning. And maybe I'm then gonna use this with my team to map out our project plan. So again, really simple template here can get you quite a long way. So if we just look at these highest level views, we can start to click into these and say, okay, well, what is the key information? So uh, let's say Bigger Plate Conference is the, the event, maybe we've got a, a date, I don't know, March 2021 or something like that. And we can say, well, time, I don't really need to put time, so I'm just gonna take that out. Location, uh, I don't know, let's let's go somewhere nice, let's go to Barbados maybe for a, for a conference. Uh, so very quickly we can just start to fill in the blanks. And again, we can build out as much information or detail as we want here around locations, decorations, cave, all the rest. And this is just one simple example of project planning. Some other features in mind mapping software that's really going to help you with project planning in terms of pulling key information together are things like notes and hyperlinks. So, for example, um, maybe under uh, logistics, let's, let's maybe look at locations. Uh, let's, let's put in a branch here that says venues. And maybe I'm, I'm in charge of doing some venue research. So what I might do is start to use some of that functionality again and say let's assign venues to Liam as a task. Maybe I go away and find a short list of venue A, venue B, and let's say venue C. Now, this is where, again, the mind map can just try to help you. You could say, okay, for each one of these, what I need to know is maybe uh, price, sorry, trying to multitask badly here, price, and maybe uh, catering as an example, uh, whatever we might need to capture for our particular uh, venue information. So notes and hyperlinks in mind maps are a really great way of pulling extra information into the map without cluttering it up. So for example, let's say I found a venue, I'm maybe clicking around the website, the web, the internet rather, and I find, uh, let's think of a, a venue, we might go to, uh, I've used this one before, so let's use it again, Windsor Castle, let's, let's go there, that's not too far from my house. So let's say we're gonna go, so one of our venue possibilities is Windsor Castle. So I can just copy this website link and I can just paste that into my event planning map onto venue A. Now, again, that doesn't quite match our Barbados criteria, but you hopefully understand the point. What that means then is when I'm looking in my venue section, I've got a little symbol here that can take me straight off to the website of venue A if I needed to just go and remind myself about something. But I could also link to maybe their pricing page, I could link to maybe their catering menu on their website, or I could also link to maybe a file. So for example, instead of linking to a website, I could actually say to the software, can you just link to a file um, on my computer? So maybe I've downloaded a, a PDF uh, of their uh, their menu. So 
it's just linked to a, an image there. So again, this is just going to link off to an, a, another file on my computer. And that means, again, in, in one project plan, you can have little signposts that take you off to the detail you need when you need it. But it's not getting in the way. I don't need to have the whole menu on display here. I've got little signposts and little signs that take me off to where I need to go. The other feature I will use quite often in my project planning is the notes feature, which is a great way of putting a lot of information just beneath the surface of your mind map. So let's go back to our Windsor Castle uh, example. Um, maybe there's just a little bit, uh, here's some summary information. So founded by William the Conqueror, well done William. So maybe I've just found a bit of information on the website that I think, well, I wanna keep this to hand. I wanna just keep this nice and, and close. So I can just say, copy that information come back to my uh, planning map. What I can do here is just say insert some notes, paste that in. And what I've got over here on the right is almost like a Word document, but I've got one of these for every single topic in the map if I want. And I can close that down, and I then get this little symbol here that tells me, Liam, you've got some extra information just beneath the surface. If I hover over that, it's my little information there about Windsor Castle being the oldest castle in the world, founded by William the Conqueror. I didn't have to go anywhere. I've got all the information I need right here. And of course, if I think, well, I want to know more about that, here's my link to the website to go and get that information. So in terms of project planning, there's a huge amount you can do all again in one mind map, just using simple features and functionality to build out an understanding of all the different component parts. Uh, and again, really importantly, have these little signposts for important information that might be somewhere else. It might be in an Excel spreadsheet, it might be in a PowerPoint slide deck, it might be all sorts of things. And just using notes and hyperlinks, I can make sure that when I'm reviewing the project plan with my team, if somebody says to me, well, can we see the menu for venue A? I can say, yep, I've got it right here. Click that, open the menu, and not losing time hunting around in files and folders trying to remember what I, killed, what I labeled it, whether I saved it or not. So a really great way of pulling a lot of information into one area together. And that's where project planning with mind mapping is a really nice way of approaching it. Other examples without really needing to go into too much depth. Some people who are more familiar with sort of mind, uh, sorry, project management processes will be familiar with things like the work breakdown structure, which is just another way of sort of planning out a, a project. So again, if I download this uh, file, I'm going to open that up. It's going to look a little bit different. Again, this is just a map that somebody else has created. And once again, I can just get rid of the bits I don't need. I can just close it down so it's a little bit more manageable. And here's where somebody has just broken down into three stages, initiation, control, and closure, which again will be pretty familiar to those of you who are project managers. But at each stage then, the person is breaking it down further. Okay, we've got our kickoff stage, we've got our objective stage, and this person is just giving you a checklist almost to go through for every single part of this uh, particular project. So ticking these things off, and again, you'll see they're using these hyperlinks to link off to other files. They're using different functionality within the software to just bring everything together into one diagram. So hopefully that's just giving you a flavor of sort of projects uh, and planning, uh, just from a, sorry, planning from a project's perspective. But again, you can be planning about anything. You'd be planning a presentation, you could be planning a, a book you're gonna write, you could be planning a holiday. Mind mapping software is a really great way of just capturing all the things you might need to think about, categorizing them so they're a little bit easier to kind of get your head around. And then again, using some of those other functions to prioritize and plan out the actual things that need to be done. So we've done some thinking, we've done some planning, and now how might we be taking action? Well, again, we've sort of seen a bit of how this would work already, but our objectives here are really to identify actions, to make our own sort of priorities nice and visual, and hopefully to sort of improve our productivity and make sure we're working on the right things. So another example sort of how a lot of people are using mind mapping is almost as a sort of personal organizer. And this is an exercise again we do in our training workshops. We get people to build a personal organizer mind map. Very, very simple. You could do it with pen and paper. Um, but once you get your hands on some software, you can really start to ramp up what we can do for you. So personal organizer mind map, for example, well, why might you do this? Well, if you're new to mind mapping, this is a really simple starting point. So uh, simpler even than SWOT analysis is just the thing that you sit down and you say, what is going on in my current working week? What have I got to get organized and, and get clear on? So it's a simple starting point. So if you're new to mind mapping, it's a really easy experiment, a way of sort of starting to feel your way into mind mapping and playing around with it a little bit. And it's low risk. It's your personal organizer mind map. It doesn't have to be shared with anyone else. It doesn't have to involve anybody else. So again, a really nice low risk way of, of playing around with mind mapping tools. Example of how, how that might work. So again, you, you don't need to always start with the big long list. You could start with some categories and say, well, 
maybe what I'm going to do is create a personal organizer mind map that looks like this at the first level. So in my typical week, I have to think about projects, meetings, teams, admin, learning. Maybe I want to create a little branch here for personal, you know, things I need to think about maybe on the home front. So you could jump straight into this and just start populating ideas in there, just like we did before. Or actually what you maybe want to try and think about before you start populating is one of the sort of subcategories here. So if we look at a sort of other example of this, maybe we want to think, how could you break down projects? And it's going to be totally dependent on your own world. So you might break down projects into what type they are. So maybe you break down projects by ongoing versus new. Or you might break the projects branch down based on your role. Maybe you're leading it or you're a participant. Or simply the name of the projects, you might just list them out. So we really just play around with what might that second level be. So if our first level is projects, what might we break that down into before we then start actually listing the individual projects? Same for meetings, we could say, well, what type of meetings, regular versus exceptional. They might be categorized by team or role. So just play around and just experiment with the personal organizer and see which one sort of reflects reality best. That's all you're trying to do here is just reflect your sort of working reality. So after you've done some of that thinking and you've populated the map, it might start to look something like this one. So maybe we've got rid of some of those other branches because we think, well, maybe we don't need it. So we've got a personal organizer mind map with just four categories. And I've decided to break down projects into ongoing or new. And I've just started to use some of these other little icons in the software. Maybe a green flag means uh, these are all on track. Maybe red flag means these are going badly. Uh, I use a little technique myself and my personal organizer where green flag means I've moved it forward this week and red flag means I haven't. Now it's very much up to me what counts as moving it forward, but I just use red and green flags as a way of making sure I'm keeping everything moving forward, hopefully at any given time across many, many different projects. So the little red green flag system I use myself just helps me try and feel like I'm keeping everything moving. So then you might start to break out your projects. You've got an ongoing web project and some integrations. And now again, we start to break out into a little bit more detail. Again, I haven't really built this map out fully, but it's just illustrating the same sort of features and functionality and breaking down. We started with projects, we've gone to ongoing, we're in integrations, maybe there's a software integration, and I've got some actions here about contacting vendors, outlining proposal. So here's an example where I might use that linking function and say I'm gonna to link to maybe a Maybe I've got a proposal, maybe it's this one, so I'm gonna link off to a Word document, maybe that's my proposal. Um, got to agree terms, that could be another link off to another document. I could use some of those kind of uh, notes feature, all these kind of functionalities. Mm -hmm. And this map just kind of becomes my control center for all of the things going on in, in my sort of daily or weekly working life. Other things you might do, you might use things like the little exclamation mark, again, just a few things in your mind map to help you surface things that maybe are more urgent. And again, in this whole mind map, I could then maybe start to say, right, I need to just filter and focus on anything that's been marked as urgent. So across the whole mind map, it's just gonna filter out and just show me things where I've used that little yellow exclamation mark symbol. So again, as your working world is sort of built up in the mind map, it's probably gonna get quite big. I and mean, this is just an example map but you see, you can start to build up quite a lot of information here. So just using some of the icons, the filtering in your mind map to really surface the things that need to be visible, really nice functionality in mind mapping software to make that very, very easy. So I think that's probably uh, all I need to talk about in terms of personal organizer. My best advice to you is to just go away and try building a personal organizer mind map. But again, other examples you could use are, again, more uh, templates from the website. You can just go and search for weekly planning or personal organizer and just see what you find, see what resonates with you. Here's another example of, of a map somebody else has created. Uh, download that, open it up, same as before. You've got a map created by somebody else here, so it's not gonna work for you straight away. You might say, I need to just get rid of some of these bits. I don't want that, I don't want that. But you'll see applying many of the same principles, they've just broken down projects into work, personal home and school, under projects, they've then got project one, project two. They started to use lots of different features and functionality here. And again, it's all in one document. They're not jumping around into different locations, trying to hunt around for particular pieces of information. It's a really great way of kind of staying in control of your, your sort of personal organization. And that's really where you're doing the action. So we've gone through a process here that you could even go through as a business. You could do a strategic planning process as a team. You might, in your strategic planning, identify some key projects like hosting an event, 
So you then go through a planning process in a different mind map for that event. And then the event planning map is going to start identifying actions and they might then feed into your personal organizer mind map. So you can hopefully see even in this very brief example how an organization, a business, could start at the highest level, strategic thinking with a SWOT analysis. That's going to identify sort of mid-level priorities like hosting an event, for example. The project planning of that mid-level then informs the micro detail around what, what needs to go into my personal action map, my personal organizer map. So we've gone through a really quick summary here of what can be a very powerful, pretty comprehensive way of covering macro, mid-level and micro-level stuff in a business just using two, three mind maps, which all can be connected together really nicely using that kind of hyperlinking and all that sort of documentation um, signposting as well. So I'm pretty much up to time, so I'm just going to wrap up very quickly. Uh, next steps, I'd encourage you all to go and have a look at Bigger Plate Pro. That's our, our upgraded membership on Bigger Plate. That's going to give you access to webinars, tutorials, uh, software discounts for those of you who haven't got software yet, uh, and a lot more content. So that's really going to help you understand how to get the most out of mind mapping tools. It's not just me talking a thousand different webinars. It's from uh, webinar interviews and presentations from mind mapping users all over the world doing a very wide range of jobs. Uh, so you can really learn how other people are using these kind of tools in, in the daily lives. If you're interested in our, our training and consulting, that model I showed you earlier, uh, we do this for, for organizations of all shapes and sizes. So even if you're a very small business, we can probably help you do that with just a couple of hours work. So uh, please feel free to get in touch with us. You can learn a little bit more about our services at biggerplate.com forward slash services. Uh, and really finally, if you want to get in touch with us about anything, feedback, questions about today, or anything else you discover as you uh, explore mind mapping and or bigger plate, um, please just let me know. There again is my email on the screen. Uh, and I'm very happy to take any questions that may have emerged uh, on the call. Uh, I can't see any in at the minute, so you're obviously a very quiet group today. Uh, okay, we've got one coming in there. Uh, uh, yeah, so a question here, which I'm, I'm not probably going to try and answer because it's a slightly tricky one to answer very quickly, is um, what's the best software? Uh, for mind mapping. So we get this uh, asked this all the time. Uh, so thank you for the question. I can't see the name now. Thank you for the question. Uh, it's, it's a great question. Uh, sadly, there's not a simple answer. The best answer I can give you is to think about what you need it to do. So mind mapping software can do mainly the same thing in terms of building mind maps like I'm going to show you. And what I've shown you today is, is the universal. So it, what I've shown you today is doable in all of the good mind mapping products. The good mind mapping products are the ones that you're featured on Bigger Plate. So that's a really great place to start is, is go and have a look at biggerplate.com. And if you click here on the page, you see software. And what we've got here is all the kind of software products that we support and we work with these organizations because they have good quality products and they're good quality organizations and we know they're gonna help people do what they wanna do. But within each of these different products, there are little strengths and, and sort of comparative weaknesses to them. Some are better for Mac users, where some maybe don't have such a good Mac version. Uh, some tools are uh, browser-based online software tools. Some require you to install software on your computer. So again, it's really going to depend on what you want to be able to do with the tools. Um, so I'd recommend going and having a look at that page and just getting familiar with, with sort of some of the different tools and click around and visit some of their websites. Um, but if you have any, any sort of specific questions and you maybe start to understand what you want to be able to do with mind mapping. You know, are you an iPad user, so you want something that's good on an iPad and on a laptop? Again, that's going to narrow the focus for which software to look at. So if you can think about what you want to try and use it for or what you think you're going to use it for in your business, um, again, feel free to contact me. And if you've got a little bit more understanding of your requirements, we usually will give uh, companies that we work with, our, our sort of consulting clients, if they are asking us for a software recommendation, we will usually give them a list of two or three that seem to match their needs and then it's up to them to go and decide if they want to go and actually uh, try or buy any of those software products. So that's a very long answer to your question. I'm sorry I can't just say this is the best software because there isn't really a best software, uh, but there's some really great tools out there. They all have different strengths, um, but I'd really just encourage you to go and explore the one start. Use Bigger Plate as your start point for your research. I don't recommend just Googling best mind mapping software because you'll get lots of tools that really are not good for mind mapping, but they're just trying to uh, use the query to, to get business. Uh, so Bigger Plate is 100% focused on mind mapping. So if you start by looking at the software tools we recommend, you're starting in the right direction there. Uh, any other questions? Uh, I can see here one. 
Uh, is bigger plate free? Yep. Yeah, so um, there's two types of membership on bigger. So the question is, sorry, is bigger plate free to use? Two types of membership on bigger plate. The first is our basic membership that is free. That enables you to download mind maps and also share mind maps. So that's really the heart of bigger plate. That's what most people need and use is just the ability to download mind maps. So that's free. So free to use. So when I've been showing you in this webinar, just downloading mind maps from the website, that's that's free. Uh, again, you're going to need to have some software ready to work with those templates, but that covers our earlier question. So bigger plate basic is free. Uh, bigger plate pro, which is our upgraded membership, that costs $29 per year. That is where it's going to give you access to a huge range of, of webinars. So if I just uh, click here, actually, I can show you. Um, oops, sorry, wrong button. So if you go to biggerplate.com forward slash pro, you'll be able to just learn what Biggerplate Pro is and whether it's relevant for you. This is a really great thing for people who are new to mind mapping or sort of trying to learn how to make better use of it. Loads of webinars, uh, live webinars all the time. Every sort of two weeks, we have a live webinar with a guest speaker, as well as a really big archive of, of our, um, previous webinars that you can watch anytime you like. So you'll see here a big long list of, of previous webinars you can watch, just click and, and view as a video if you're a pro member, covering everything from coaching to goal setting, uh, marketing, writing a book, uh, strategic planning. So really we've got pretty much any kind of topics covered in webinars. So great idea if you're trying to learn how to apply mind mapping in your business, uh, upgrade to pro and take a look at some of the contents in there. So lots of webinars, um, tutorials, uh, and also special offers for software. So for certain software products, uh, we've got a, a, a discount for our pro members. So if you haven't yet bought software, uh, upgrade to Bigger Plate Pro, you'll be able to get a discount on any software you do go and buy perhaps. Um, so hopefully that just gives you a, a quick sense. So free membership on Bigger Plate gives you access to the Mind Map Library. Pro membership at Bigger Plate gives you access to a, a whole load of resources to really help you make the most out of Mind Mapping uh, tools and techniques. Uh, that looks like, uh, oh, question, where is Bigger Plate? Where is Bigger Plate? Uh, so Bigger Plate is based in London in the UK. Uh, so that's where I live and work and where Bigger Plate is, is based out of. Uh, we work, however, all over the world. So I've, I've just come back from uh, nearly two weeks working in the USA uh, with um, training clients we've, we've got over there. Uh, we've also done work in, uh, in Colombia, in uh, lots of many different European countries and in Asia as well. So uh, Bigger Plate works in terms of our services all over the world. Uh, but the more important thing is the Bigger Plate community, those 185,000 members, they are from all over the world. So we've got members from every country you can imagine uh, registered on Bigger Plate and, and downloading mind maps and exploring mind mapping. So we've got loads of mind maps in different languages, lots of great content. No matter where you are in the world, Bigger Plate is a, a sort of community of mind mappers. So uh, yeah, we're company is based in London, UK, but Bigger Plate is a as a community is, is much, much broader and bigger than that. Um, so hopefully I've answered those questions. Uh, I've got a question here, uh, Sammy, thanks for your question, says, what is the yearly price? Uh, Sammy, I'm gonna assume you're asking about Bigger Plate Pro membership, and that's where I said earlier, it's just $29 per year. You can cancel any time. So um, if you want access to all of our webinar stuff, that's the price per year, if that's what you're asking about. Um, if you're asking about the price of software per year, that's going to depend which software products you're looking at, obviously. But the price of Bigger Plate Pro, uh, our upgrade is $29.99 uh, $29 per year. Uh, so hopefully that answers that question uh, for you there, Sammy. Uh, any other final questions? I'm not seeing anything new coming in, and I'm wary that I'm pretty much up against my time. So I'm going to just come back to this. So you've got my contact details on the screen for this final section. Um, so I can't see any new questions coming in, but if anybody has any questions that they come up against uh, after this session, or maybe you go and explore Bigger Plate and you get stuck or confused, uh, or you go try software, <clears throat> uh, please don't be hesitating to, to contact me. My details are there on the screen. Uh, I hope this has been a useful overview of how mind mapping can, can be used in just a couple of different areas. Again, there's a really wide range of areas that can help. But most of it is about thinking, planning, and action. Uh, so hopefully I've given you a, a good overview of that for mind mapping in a business context. Uh, any other questions, uh, please do kind of uh, let me know, and I'll be very happy to help. But uh, in the meantime, I wish you all a very pleasant rest of your day, wherever you are in the world, and uh, thank you for joining me.